Hi everyone, welcome back. So you might remember that a few weeks ago we did a video about Spanish words that are used in English and one of the requests that I received was for a video about German words in English and so that's what you have today. But one quick note, I can't really say that I speak German. I did German at school but to be honest I've forgotten almost all of it. Um, so I can't say that for sure that these words are used exactly the same in German as they are in English, but I have checked, they all come from German. And so it will be interesting to see how they are, how they are used. So without further ado, let's take a look at the first. So the first word that I have for you today is the word kitsch. And this is an interesting word because it comes directly from German. And I think it might have the same meaning in the German language. And it's very hard to define. So I'm going to let the Cambridge Dictionary do that for me. So I'm going to read their definition. So it means art or decorative objects or design considered by many people to be ugly without style or false, but enjoyed by other people often because they are funny. So this might be something that's a little bit quirky, if you know that word or strange to other people, but that a small group of society find really enjoyable. And so you typically find it in sentences to do with decorative style um, in, in people's homes. So for example, their house is full of kitsch that they have collected at car boot sales. If you don't know what a car boot sale is, it's kind of the British equivalent of garage sales or yard sales that they have in the US. So generally people will sell the stuff that they don't want or need anymore directly from their car boot and they usually go to a field or a designated place to do that so that's an interesting part of british culture the car boot sale but yeah this word is kitsch so word number two is fest and this is i would say a synonym for festival if you already know festival but it's really common and maybe trendy to use the word fest instead so you might have a jazz fest or a music fair simply and it means a celebration or a collection of things all happening together in a group. So, for example, every July, our town celebrates a food and wine fest. Yes, yeah, so every July we get together and there's a celebration where we eat lots of food and there's various types of wines to be tried and to be drunk. Right. So that is fest. So this is word number three and it's pronounced angst angst so i think it sounds quite germanic this word i think it's quite clear that it has germanic origin so in english it means a feeling of great anxiety or worry so it's quite a strong noun to describe this feeling of worry or anxiety and so you might see it or hear it in sentences such as this Waiting while her, her husband was in the operating theatre caused her a great deal of angst. Waiting while her husband was in the operating theatre caused her a great deal of angst. Okay, so it's used for these scenarios when we're very worried or very anxious. So there you have the third word. The next word is doppelganger. Now, as you can see, it actually has an umlaut on the A. And from what I remember, that probably would change the A sound to a different sound in German, but we don't really pay attention to it. We have it. I don't know why we kept it, but we have the umlaut, but it's pronounced doppelganger. And a doppelganger is somebody who looks exactly like somebody else, exactly like them. They're not related, but you meet them and you think, wow, they're exactly the same as somebody else. It's like their twin without being their twin. Okay, so you might hear this word in a sentence such as, she couldn't believe it when she bumped into her doppelganger at a conference. Yeah, it's completely pure chance encounter with this person. Okay, and I hope you noticed the phrasal verb bump into, which is in the phrasal verb series, which I did before. I'll put a link in the description box below. So hopefully you recognise the phrasal verb as well. But yeah, this word is doppelganger. The fifth word is kaput. And as you can see, in German, it's spelt with two T. So this is actually a time when we have modified the spelling slightly. We only have one T in British spelling for kaput. Now, it means broken. 
it's a synonym for broken. You can use it instead of, of broken simply. So, for example, I think the washing machine is kaput. It keeps leaking. I have to say, I do feel like we use this more with mechanical things when they go wrong. So like the radio is kaput, the TV is kaput, but it's definitely a synonym for broken. If you feel like you want to try something different, this is a fun word to try. The next word is eider down. And as you can see, again, this, there's been a slight modification in the spelling, but it's clearly from the same root. Now, eider is a type of duck and down is the name for the soft, fluffy feathers from that duck. And this was a traditional filling for duvets and quilts. Remember, a duvet or a quilt is the cover that you put on your bed, the thick blanket that you put on your bed during the winter to, to keep warm. And some people actually use eiderdown as a synonym for a duvet or a quilt. So depending on the family, you might find that some people use eiderdown, duvet or quilt for that thick blanket. So let's have a look at a contextual sentence. The duvet is made of the finest eiderdown. Word number seven is poltergeist. Poltergeist. So I checked, geist is the German word for ghost, okay? And a poltergeist is a type of ghost that people believe moves furniture or does things to let you know that they're there. So for example, they were convinced that a poltergeist lived in the house because the furniture seemed to move by itself. So yeah, a poltergeist is a specific type of ghost. We do have the word ghost, which of course we use more generally, but when you feel like something, things keep getting moved from place to place, then people might suspect a poltergeist. The eighth word is rucksack. Now, rucksack is simply a synonym for a backpack. And maybe that's the word that you know a little bit better. Generally, I find that people know backpack better than rucksack, but some people say rucksack, and this comes from German. I'm pretty sure that it means exactly the same thing in German. So it should be quite simple, this one. So they packed a rucksack before setting off on their hike through the mountains. And again, I've incorporated another phrasal verb from the phrasal verb set to set off, remember, which means to leave or to start a journey. So this word is rucksack. The penultimate word of German origin is abseil. And abseiling, which is the noun form, is an activity or sport which involves securing a rope to the top of a cliff or a steep edge. So you secure here with the rope and then you use the secure rope to gradually come down the side of the cliff. Okay, so this is typically used in a sentence such as she abseiled down the cliff to save the stranded people below. So some people might do this for a sport, but obviously sometimes you might need to use it to save somebody who has got stranded or stuck in a place which you can't get to them by any other means. So to abseil. The 10th German word is wanderlust. And I think this might actually be my favorite German word. It's a direct loan word from German because we don't really have an English word to describe this overwhelming desire to, to travel. It's a really fun word. I really like it. It's probably pronounced completely differently in German, but in English we call it wanderlust. And let's have a look at it in a sentence. So after months of COVID restrictions, wanderlust is very strong for many people. This incredible, deep desire to travel. So this one is wanderlust. I hope you enjoyed So it. that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I certainly enjoyed doing the research into this one. I find it absolutely fascinating finding the different loan words from different languages. Let me know if you know of any other loan words that English has from German or any other language for that matter, especially if it's your first language that we've borrowed some words from. But yes, that's it. Nothing else to say. Take care and come back another day. Bye.